Welcome to Electron Online. Here we have a table, a table that represents the transformation from the time domain into the frequency domain, the Laplace transformation. Of course, it's not a complete table. A complete table would be very, very large, but at least this contains most of the common transformations that we will encounter in most problems. The first one is a delta function. The delta function, when we transform it via the Laplace transform, becomes equal to 1 in the frequency domain. Then we have the step function where at time equals zero, this would be the time equals zero, it goes up to one. Before that it's zero, after that it's equal to one. When we do a Laplace transformation of that, we get one over s. If there's a time delay of equals to a, then the transformation, this is written as u sub a times t, where it becomes one at time equals a, then we add this term e to the minus ax, as times 1 over s when we do the Laplace transformation. And if there's just a short period of time from a to b in which the value is equal to 1, then it's written as e to the minus as minus e to the minus b as over b minus a times 1 over s. Notice that in all cases you always have 1 over s as simply the transformation from a step function in the time domain to the frequency domain with the other terms included if there's a time delay e to the minus a t when we transform that to the frequency domain becomes 1 over s plus a and e to the plus a t becomes 1 over s minus a also notice that if the time function is linear as a function of t then the transformation the laplace transformation is 1 over s squared if it's time squared then the transformation becomes 2 over s cubed hmm, that's kind of strange but then if you see the general equation you realize why t to the n power is n factorial divided by s to the n plus 1. So it's always equal to 1 over s to the n plus 1. In the numerator, we get the factorial of the exponent. If we encounter a function where it's t times e to the minus a t, notice for t it would be 1 over s squared. So it's still 1 over something squared, but now instead of having s, we have s plus a. The e to the minus a t simply puts the plus a inside here. If we have t to the n power, same thing, it'll be n factorial like before over s plus a to the n plus 1. If it's t to the e plus a t, then of course it becomes s minus a instead of s plus a. The sine omega t and the cosine of omega t are very common transfers. So when we transfer from the time domain to the frequency domain, for the sine of omega t, notice we get omega divided by s squared plus omega squared. But for the cosine, it's s divided by s squared plus omega squared. Notice that the denominators are the same, but for the sine we get omega in the numerator, for the cosine we get s in the numerator. Now we have the product of e to the minus at, in both cases, times the sine and the cosine. Notice how that changes. Again, just like before, we have e to the minus a t multiplied times the function. We have an s plus a, no different here. s plus a, the omega and omega squares stay the same. But when it comes to the cosine, e to the minus a t times the cosine of omega t, also the numerator, instead of having s, that also becomes s plus a, just like it does in the denominator. And finally, we have the hyperbolic functions, the hyperbolic sine and the hyperbolic cosine. Notice that it changes from the sine and the cosine. The pluses simply become minuses. Everything else is the same. So these are the common transformations which, which you will encounter quite a bit. And so it's actually not a bad idea to try and memorize this table. You may say, ooh, that's a lot of work. But believe me, it'll save you a lot of work in the future. It'll make it a lot easier to work out the problems in the future like you will see in the examples in the videos. But try to memorize at least these sets of transformations from the time domain to the frequency domain, and you'll be glad you did. That's how we do that.